Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is another lecture for CT2. Um, it's called Opportunity Costs. And what I'm thinking of doing is diving straight into the material. And I found a book that actually explains opportunity costs uh, very nicely. It's called Economics, Big Ideas Simply Explained. Uh, it's by DK Publishing. And this is actually, I'm just going to be reading straight from the textbook. It says here, Economists at the end of the 1800s were still wrestling with what determined the value of a product. By 1914, Austrian economist Friedrich von Weser was convinced that the value of something was determined by what had to be given up in order to get it. In a world where people have infinite wants and yet have only a fixed amount of resources to meet those wants, he argued that scarcity would create the need for choices. He called this concept opportunity cost in foundations of social economy. In 1935, US economist Lionel Robbins argued that a tragedy of human life is that consequences of choosing to do one thing is that something else has to be given up. So for example, this means that the cost of going to the movies is not really the cost of admission to the cinema, but also the enjoyment you give up from the next best choice of activity. So although there is a monetary consequence of choosing one course of action, Opportunity cost means more. You can't watch a movie and ice skate at the same time. Sometimes there is what can be called an opportunity cost, even if there is no monetary cost. Visor thought that ultimately the price of a product was determined by how much it was desired, and this is measured by what people were willing to give up to get it, rather than how much it cost to produce. And this was like a big breakthrough um, in economics. I mean, back in the day, people thought that the price of a commodity should be, you know, the amount of uh, labor it takes to extract that commodity. But uh, Friedrich laid the way, and I mean, later economists would then come up with the whole idea of supply and demand uh, to determining the cost of an item. But this whole idea of opportunity cost is, is critical when it comes to business and to what projects we should pursue. Because as a business, um, we've learned about the financial manager, uh, one of their goals is to maximize shareholders' wealth, and by doing so, they can take on profitable projects. Now we introduce this thing known as opportunity cost, and we say, if our um, financial manager has a choice between project A and project B, project A will give 10% uh, return, project B will give 20% return, then, um, and they say the cost of capital is 5%, then both projects are profitable, but the uh, manager should rather pursue project B. And the reason for doing option B and not option B and A is that you can't get an infinite amount of money to do these projects. Yes, you can borrow money from a bank, but you can't borrow an, you know, a massive, massive amount because A, the banks might not have that much money and B, they want to limit their credit risk um, you know, that you might not pay them back. So you can't pursue all the projects, all the profitable projects. So you have to pursue the best ones. And not only is it there the monetary constraints, but there's also the time constraints, there's the amount of staff and resources constraints. Uh, there's a lot of things limiting a business to only pursue a certain amount of projects at a time. Now, as actuaries, we, we love this whole subject of opportunity cost because there's an extra dimension which not many other people uh, comprehend too well, and that is risk. Every project um, that you take on involves some sort of uncertainty and some sort of risk. So say, for example, we've got project A and we've got project B. And project A is at 10% and project B is at 20% uh, return. An actuary will also say, well, what is the risk of project B? And what is the risk of project A? And if the risk is significantly high for project B, then maybe project A is better to take. But the thing is, where do you draw that line? And it comes back to the shareholders. What is their risk tolerance? What is their risk appetite? And so you can see this can become quite a, a detailed discussion. And it's something um, we'll learn later on in this course is project appraisal, where we'll use a whole bunch of mathematics to try and assist us in determining what is the best project to take so that we can minimize our opportunity costs. But remember, even once we do all of that type of stuff, there is this extra dimension of risk. And look, if you're starting off actuarial science um, in CT2, if this is just the second course you're doing, um, you won't have much, 
you won't have that much exposure to risk. But as the course goes on, you're going to see risk is a fundamental subject of that tree. And once you master that, I mean, then capital project appraisals, you can become like an expert in. And this is where actuaries can add a lot of value to society. By accurately pricing for risk, they can help people to make the best decisions and thus minimize opportunity costs. But yeah, that's all we have time for um, in this lecture. Uh, hit subscribe because I will be making a whole bunch of more uh, videos. The next one is going to be on the capital markets. Thanks guys so much for watching and feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Cheers.